The smokestack stocks have been roaring lately. Man, there's a lot more room to run, in my opinion. Look at Magna International, a company that makes all sorts of complicated car parts and also assembles complete vehicles for the major automakers. Now, we know Magna's business is booming right now. There's a fabulous bull market for autos, and the company reported a phenomenal quarter last month. On top of that, you also got the big electric vehicle kicker. Remember, Magna is the company that Fisker, the aspiring Tesla rival, chose to partner with to make their electric SUV. When it came on the show, they talked about it. Most important, while the stock's up more than 250% over the last year, that's right, 250, it's still just selling for a ridiculously low 12 times earnings. It seems like a steal. Don't take it from me. Let's think deeper. New guest, Swami Katagiri. And Mr. Katagiri is the new CEO of Magna International. He had a better read on where his company's headed. Mr. Katagiri, welcome to Mad Money. Oh, great to be on the show, Jim. Uh, nice to be on the show. Thank you for the kind words. Well, first one, I've got to tell you, I've been thinking a lot about your company because all of your work and all your documents make it clear it is a technology company that helps mobility. It's a mobility tech company. Why are people having such a hard time realizing that you are not the old car parts assembler of our different era? I could have summarized it better, uh, Jim. Uh, I think Magna is, I like to call it a $40 billion startup with a 60 year history. Uh, and we are really getting started because we are in an industry that is really high tech and complex and has an addressable market of 3 trillion and going, uh, going forward still. Uh, as we look at the product portfolio, uh, it's really broad, but we have a market leadership position in most of the products that we are presenting. The uniqueness of Magna really is besides the system knowledge we have in all the product, we engineer and manufacture full vehicles. Uh, that, that's the uniqueness and yeah, with the mobility changing to service and all the disruptions that we are happening, uh, that are happening in the industry, I think we're just getting started. Okay, Swami, let me ask this in a kind of funny way. A lot of people say when you have a party, you can't have enough ice. You have too much ice. You literally have so much internal combustible engine. I think it actually camouflages all you're doing with these new technologies. I, I'm glad you asked the question, Jim. We can clarify that a little bit. Uh, we are actually agnostic to propulsion system. Uh, think of a car, doesn't matter whether you have ice or hydrogen or EV or anything else. You still need to have a body and chassis and lights and actuators and seats and so on and so forth. 70 to 80% of our company is that product. And you know what? We have market leadership position in most of those products. We generate really good cash. If you look at the last three years, uh, yeah, the results speak for themselves, right? We generated about $5.8 billion in cash, invested about $4 billion back into the business, and this is what sets us up to be able to invest into the future. And if you have seen the next three years, we continue the performance in a similar way. So I think this actually helps us to lay the foundation and lean forward in EVs and autonomous and mobility as a service. So we are really ice agnostic. No, you're right. You've got the best balance sheet of an industry that apparently, apparently, and a lot of times they end up, I see companies raising money and they didn't know they needed the money. Now here's one for you that I think is, is a little controversial. You seem to be the only company in your industry that has a handle on commodity costs. You did not talk about how the supply chain is worrisome for you, whether it be plastic, whether it be semiconductors. Is that because, and this is what I always thought of you as, you're the best sourcer of parts and chips and plastic or whatever's needed, including aluminum, of any company owner? Uh, Jim, uh, I think a lot of credit really goes to the resilience of the management team and the employee base, right? I mean, we have the same bumps as everybody else in the industry, but we have been able to get through it with the cooperation of the uh, tier one suppliers, our suppliers, I mean, and the customers working together. Look, we, we had to get through the bumps of the resin because of what's happening in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the same issues with the, the semiconductor chips, but you know, touch wood till now, we have been able to get through it. Uh, really, the foundation of Magna is operational excellence, and uh, that stood us, uh, stood by us as we get through some of these bumps today. Now, you obviously, uh, we had uh, Mr. Fisker on. He, he could not have been more powerful. That's one of the reasons why I was so thrilled that we could have you on, because Mr. Fisker said, listen, we can deal with everybody. We got to deal with Magna. Magna made us a great deal, and they are not a, a customer or a supplier. They are our partner. Can you describe what that partnership means for Magna? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, what we're doing with Fisker is really a great uh, proof point.
point of uh, Magna's capabilities and what we can bring to the table, Jim, right? Not only do we have uh, the system knowledge and bring a uh, EV architecture, the entire ADAS package, the flexible uh, vehicle architecture, and do the contract vehicle manufacturing and engineering and integration as we work through, uh, you know, Fisker managing the entire value chain with them, right? Right. Uh, I think working together at an early stage this way really is capital efficiency in my viewpoint. We are able to uh, get speed to the market. We are able to get the uh, advantages of engineering once and deploying many times. Uh, the differentiation and the customer experience is what you know the OEM in this case Fisker is doing, and the rest of the stuff we are able to do behind the scenes and uh, enable mobility. Well, um, it doesn't necessarily preclude you, I presume, from doing business with any, uh, with any other company uh, like that. And I know also, I mean, everyone wants to work with Apple. Apple is never going to say who it's working with, and if you say you're working with Apple, they're going to cut you off. But you, if someone came to, if a big company came to you and said, listen, we want to be your partner too, you wouldn't have to go to Fisker and say, I'm sorry, we can't do, we, we, we have to cut you off. Or you, or you can't say to any other company that comes in, we're already working with Fisker, we can't work with you. Uh, doing contract vehicle manufacturing and engineering is not new to us at all, Jim. As you know, we built over 3.7 million vehicles in our uh, grass facility and over 30 models. So that's, you know, only one aspect of it. And we have done it with different OEMs. And, you know, uh, recently we just launched the ArcFox in our joint venture in China. And I've always said before, if there is the right business case and the right partner, uh, we would get the footprint to North America too. So there is no constraints uh, from Fisker or anybody else. Uh, so this is a model that we've had in the past and uh, we are really looking forward with many other discussions, right? There's many uh, established OEMs as well as the new entrants that are, uh, you know, bringing us to the table. Excellent. Well, look, I'm so glad you came to the show. You're just such a fabulous company. I've revered you guys from when I was at Goldman in the 80s. You were the only one that I ever felt safe to recommend in a whole sector. Great job. That is Swami Kotagiri. Now, he is the new CEO of Magna. Really great to meet you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. Look, you want you want EV, you want autonomous driving, you want someone to understand the supply chain, you want to be affiliated with an outfit like Fisker. Lower risk, better reward. Magna, mad money's back into the brick.